Okay, let's try that again. We had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties first time around, so thank you for your patience. We're going to try this again using the vertical video. We were trying to do horizontal shots so we could get a little bit more of the product in there, but um, this is fine too. Everything is fine. Everything is 100% <laughs> under control, right Mike? Yep. Yeah, so um, for the it's past uh, couple episodes, I haven't really had Mike as my cameraman. And now he's back, and he has immediately dropped the ball yes. on the one thing <laughs> that you were I, supposed to do, which what I was gonna say. set well, up the camera. Yeah. You had one job. Yep, I'm that's a terrible okay. producer. That's, that's fine. We'll, um, we'll, have, we'll do your performance review after this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so thank you guys for, for joining us uh, this week. This is actually going to be our last live episode. Um, we really enjoy doing these um, doing these videos. We feel like it's given us a chance to share more about the product and give you a little bit of a behind the scenes look. But uh, we have some big changes coming up in our personal lives, um, which are exciting and maybe we can get into that a little bit. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to um, make it so that it is a little bit difficult for us to do, to be at the same place at the same time doing the live episodes in a consistent way every week. So we're going to shift to a pre-recorded format, um, which will be cool as well, and we'll release them hopefully weekly as well. Um, but it'll give us a, a chance to kind of batch the, uh, the the work that it takes to put the videos in a little bit yeah, more we're of still gonna, easier way. We're still going to upload them to Facebook. Yep, they'll still be available uh, on and Facebook and YouTube. We will also upload them to YouTube. So the only difference is that it's not going to be like live, live. Yeah. And we will edit out the some of the mistakes. Yeah, so for example <laughs> <laughs> So for example, if the camera's not in the right position when we start, we'll be able to edit that out. Exactly. You'll never even know that, that happens. So yep. that's okay. Um uh, but yeah, so so the, the big news for us personally is that we are moving, um, which is exciting. So we have about four years ago we moved our uh, workshop upstate um, to upstate New York. It had been in New York City. It had been in Brooklyn, um, and we had moved it upstate um, to Walton, New York, which is in the Catskill region, about three or four hours from the city. And so we moved up with it to get it get it all set up to get the workshop set up. But now that everything is running smoothly up here, we've decided that it is a good time for us to get down closer to the store, closer to the city, so that we can spend more time in the brick and mortar store and hopefully seeing a lot of you guys in person as well. So we are getting an apartment in Weehawken, New Jersey. As a lifelong New Yorker, it's hard for me to admit that I would be <laughs> living in New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's... <laughs> no offense to our no New offense Jersey friends. No New Jersey, but, um, <laughs> you know, but yeah, uh, I know what you mean. if you're a New Yorker, you, you know what I mean. Um, and uh, We should have moved to West New York, New yeah, Jersey. There's, yeah, a, there's place a place we called, found. We've, we discovered a place called West New York, New Jersey, yep. which is like, come on guys, you're trying a little <laughs> too hard to, to be like New York. But anyway, we're moving there. It's going to be great, um, but it's just going to mean a lot more commuting time for us, and it's going to be a little bit more difficult for us to do the shows um, at a reasonable time in a consistent way. So. Uh, it also gives us more flexibility, right? Like one of the, we did a show in the store uh, two shows ago, yeah, right? Yeah, something like that. But it's kind of hard to do it during the day when people are there. Yeah. Um, and uh, customers are walking by and stuff. So this would give us flexibility to do a show in the store and show store stuff as well. Like yeah. uh, recording, not live. Yeah. Not, not doing the live. So it just recording. gives us more flexibility and hopefully we'll be able to give you more, um, you know, more of that behind the scenes uh, uh, look that you guys have been getting. So um, thanks for supporting us on our live journey. And I hope that you continue to follow us now that the episodes will be recorded and uploaded. Um, we're going to try and still keep to a weekly schedule. Um, so it's consistent, um, but we'll see how that goes. Um, so today, uh, so the past couple of episodes, we've been talking about our framed butterflies, which are beautiful, but to this week we are moving on to something which I think is even cooler, which is our framed beetles. Um, so Mike, what do you think about our, our beetles as opposed to butterflies? Aren't they just like way more awesome? Well, they, they are definitely more rare. Like mm -hmm. it's kind of easy to find butterflies out there, like framed butterflies, even though it's not very good quality, but it's easy to find. It's really hard to find beetles. Like yes. you don't, 
especially spread beetles like these. So, and also, um, I know that sounds strange, but they're more like three D in the sense that they, they look are, like a yeah. little, you know, like a little bug in your wall mm -hmm. or something, and they have more texture, mm -hmm. more color. Mm -hmm. So they they do tend to be more uh, interesting. I think that once you did the butterfly thing, which is more accessible to anybody and you start getting into the whole bug craze, you mm -hmm. start move, slowly moving on to beetles. Yes. Uh, and then eventually get a centipede okay. or something. So I roped you in with the pretty butterflies, but now <laughs> now that I have you in my grasp, I'm going to take you in and I'm show, going to show you the stuff that's really cool, really different, really unique, which is our, our very large and interesting selection of beetles. Um, and so I have three different types of beetles here today. Mike is going to give you a close-up on them. And um, these are from three different families, and so quiz time, Mike. I haven't um, prepared him for this. No. But uh, no, so I have a, I have a quiz for you. So uh -huh. we have three different families of beetles. Um, okay. We have longhorn beetles. Well, there are there are more than three, but today here we have longhorn beetle, okay. stag beetle, and leaf beetle. Okay. And so your uh, quiz is to to show everybody a close up of each beetle, and then tell me which one you think belongs in which category. Uh, okay, all right, so longhorn, leaf, and uh, stag. stag. I know how uh, some of the stag beetles look like. That, that's going to be easy. You, you, make, you made it easy. Uh -huh. Right, so this is one. Uh, this is the second one. And I'm actually trying to look at them through the camera. Um... I recognize this one as the the frog legged uh, beetle, right? Like, and they come in different colors too. Mm -hmm. uh, so I recognize this guy. Uh, uh, okay, and then that's the third. This one's a little bit green too, which is cool. All right, so uh, the longhorn, uh, I imagine, is the one with a long horn. If I were to be scientific about it and uh do you want to so, is, is, so is that the one that you were holding then um uh, you want to lock that in no i'll lock it in this <laughs> this is this is the longhorn i bet mm -hmm. maybe uh this is um the stag mm -hmm. i kind of recognize the shape from some other stuff that we sell um and this will be uh the last one. The leaf beetle? Uh, yeah, maybe. I'll probably get this stuff, like, way wrong. I'm, I'm like a mineral mm -hmm. meteorite guy, but go ahead. What is it? Well, you actually got them right. I was oh, surprised. Snap. I thought that you were going <laughs> to get at least the longhorn and the stag beetle confused because uh, this one does look like it has long horns, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, actually, no, you got it right. So this is the longhorn beetle, the leaf beetle, and the stag beetle. Um, so we have these three different families here, and then I also have them in the natural frames. Um, so I have one of each in natural as well. So I think that's nice. Do you, personally, Mike, do you prefer the natural frames or the black frames better? Um, I prefer the black ones. I think that they are uh, more modern, mm -hmm. you know, um, and... I don't, I don't know. I just prefer darker, mm -hmm. you know, gro like gloomier colors. So I like the uh, the black one better. It depends what it is, but for the most part, I like the black frames. Yeah, and I think most people probably would agree with you. Um, I like the black ones, too. We have um, these brass hooks on the back, and I particularly like the black and brass uh, com color combination. Um, that's something I think that we're going to be using yeah. a lot in our new apartment. Yep. And so that would be a fun thing to, to kind of document how we go about, um, you know, uh, decorating the apartment, um, maybe getting some new furniture. Yeah, I feel, I feel, I mean, we're not finished with the living room here, but I feel so bad that we didn't document. Yeah, we kind uh, of like rushed through it. And we didn't especially because, uh, we're trying to go for like, uh, 
you know, Victorian old timey. Mm-hmm. Uh, I keep saying I don't know if it's right, but like a vampire thing, <laughs> <laughs> but like a you know, uh, trying to hearken back mm-hmm. to that, but not really be mm-hmm. too in your face about it. Yeah. Uh, and it was fun getting some of the stuff that we got up here just because of some of the good deals we got. Oh uh, yeah. Because up here we're furnishing with essentially. Stuff all from antique, uh, stores. antique stores trying to go as much recycle things as possible so that's a cool thing we unfortunately did not record the yeah. uh the before and after but we want to do it with the apartment yeah because uh, we're, we're we have the opportunity fun. to start with kind of like a blank box and so that'll be fun to fun to do um but anyway so back back to the beatles so anyway i just got off on that tangent because <laughs> i like the, the yeah. black and the brass i think yeah. that i would like to use yeah. that in the in the new place a lot more um, and so we have uh, the three different families of beetles, black and natural frames. I'm going to start off um, just by focusing on the stag beetle, uh, which is that one. one. Yep. So I can hold it up a yep. little bit. So let's just look at the, uh, the, the black and natural version of this stag beetle. And so it's called a stag beetle, obviously, because it has these kind of like horn looking appendages, right? Like a stag. Um, but those are actually not horns. Do you know what part of the anatomy that actually is? The I'm trying to get this thing a little bit more. There it is. Uh, so they're not horns. Uh, they're like the lower jaw. Yeah, they're mandibles. My God, so. I'm on fire today. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you work at like a science company. Yeah. Or Maybe you've absorbed some information over the past Just like being ten around. years. Yep. Um, but yeah, so they're part. They're they're actually part of the mandible. They're part of the lower jaw, and so they. But they use their mandibles much in the same way that stags, um, you know, male deers use their antlers, and so they will fight with them. They will like compete over territory, compete over mates, right? So these are males. These are male um, male stag beetles, and they have these large mandibles that look like antlers, and they use them in much the same way that um, deers use their antlers uh, for competing and stuff like that. So that's very cool. Um, so you see these connections throughout the animal kingdom in terms of animal behavior. And what I think is cool too about beetles is that they're like really badass compared to butterflies. I mean, butterflies are pretty and beautiful, but they are, you know, they're pretty fragile. They're pretty simple creatures. I think beetles are really great because they um, they do seem to have more complex behaviors, more complex social um, structures and stuff like that. So. I think that um, beetles are just more interesting from I don't know, you know what I'm biology doing. I'm being very creative <laughs> with trying to figure it out. I miss our camera. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get it set up again. Don't worry. Um, so you can do your art. You know, yeah. Artists yeah. <laughs> have those tools, right? Uh-huh. Um, so, so these stag beetles, um, so they're, the scientific name for them is Lamprima adolphinae. Maybe you can show them on the back. Yep. The scientific name spelling. Um, and so these are native to Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, that sort of area, that sort of part of the world. Um, and uh, as Mike mentioned, our 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 beetles are really really unique in that they're articulated. Yeah, I can't get this thing to They're Sorry, spread. Um, they're spread in a way that a lot of other people don't do. It's really rare to be able to find um, intact beetles. Um, for sale uh, in, in a mounted display, and it's even rare for, for people to be able to find them with this uh, very detailed articulation of the legs. So you can see we've tried to achieve perfect symmetry between the mandibles, the legs, um, the positioning of the body. Um, we're very careful with how we place it in the frame, and that really is a, a three-dimensional puzzle that you have to, that you have to work with. Um, maybe one day we'll be able to interview one of our fabricators and they'll be able to tell you that spreading beetles is really a three-dimensional um, project. It's almost like like creating a small sculpture because um, it, the, the, the joints, you have to get the joints articulated in such a very specific way for it to maintain that symmetrical look. It's really, it takes a lot of practice and they're they do a great job with it. I don't know if you can get, if you can see, if you can have a perspective where you can see kind of how thick the beetle is, or if that's not at all possible. Uh, a little kind of bit. See. Yeah, but it is, so it is like a nice, good sized beetle. I mean, it has that beautiful iridescence. A lot of beetles have iridescence, um, which I think they use mostly for self-defense, um, I think. 
Because it certainly doesn't help with camouflage, right? Uh, well, the green maybe, but the blue but and shiny. stuff, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I think I from from what I heard, I think that the um, the the iridescence reflects in the eyes of predators. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Kind of yeah, that's confuses what confuses them yeah. as to where they are. Um, yeah. So that it makes them harder for them to catch. Like a bird, for example, will get a, a reflection in their eye, and they won't be able to yeah. pinpoint exactly. I think where so. The bug like is. Uh, if if somebody's shining a mirror in your face, yeah, like and, it's kind of uh, shimmering. Yeah, you won't it's be kind able of hard to, to tell well. how uh, far away the mirror is. Yeah. So I think that's that's part of their um, self defense mechanism. So that's cool. Um, so that is the Lamprima adolphinae. Um, I should mention as well uh, all of the beetles that I am showing you today are going to be available on our website with free shipping for the next week. So if you'd like to order any of these, you can do so, and we will ship them with USPS to you um, uh, domestically only. Um, no international orders for this um, with free shipping. You can order them internationally, but there are special procedures for that. Um, if you would like to do that, let us know, and we can talk to you about that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, so that is the, the, the stag beetles. Let's move on, Mike, to the, um, frog-legged beetles, mm -hmm. the, which, um, the family is leaf beetle. Yeah, these things do not look like leaves at all. They're, they're not named for what they look like. Oh, okay. So a lot of the times they, they are, right, uh, um, longhorn beetles, stag beetles, what they look like. In this case, the leaf, they're called leaf beetles because that's where they're found. They're found almost exclusively on leaves. They almost exclusively eat leaves. Um, a lot of leaf beetles are actually, not this species, but a lot of other species of leaf beetles are big agricultural pests and um, are very problematic because they eat leaves. Mm -hmm. um, so not all species are, are you know, necessarily um, you know, problematic with agriculture, but this one is. Um, and it just kind of goes to show the, the, the importance that beetles have in human culture, um, that we, you know, they, they come into contact with, with humans quite a lot, obviously. Um, and there are beetles in, you know, religion, in art, um, obviously, like I said, in agriculture, but also as food. Um, there are places all over the world where people eat insects including beetles mm -hmm. um, we have a few for sale um in our store we have some insect snacks yeah um, but they're not beetles right no not, we not don't have any beetles uh we have to get some i mean we got uh maybe people are kind of freaked out more by <laughs> beetles than uh, we try ants once yeah chocolate cover ants but they melted <laughs> but they melted that wasn't great <laughs> they tasted fine but they melted yeah, they so it's not fine. easy to, to store but and yeah display. beetles is not yeah not very common but anyway so the common name so this is the family name is leaf beetle but the common name is frog-legged beetle obviously because it has these really overdeveloped kind of hind legs that look like you know he's been going to the gym a little too much it's like <laughs> His, his his hind legs are on steroids or something. Um, they're really, really overdeveloped. Uh, he almost looks like a like a grasshopper or something like that. Yeah, all beetles have wings, right? So, yes, they do, uh, actually. Why would it, this beetle need, like, a jumping leg if... It's not for jumping. Oh, it's not? Yes. So the beetle, the beetle kingdom is a, a very uh, harsh place to live. And <laughs> apparently uh, these legs, the frog-legged beetles, have these overdeveloped hindquarters because they hold down their mates oh, during, yeah. uh, you know, yep. special times. Uh -huh. so, um, so they kind of pin, pin down snoo, snoo. their partner. <laughs> Does anybody get the reference? So they pin down their partners um, during uh -huh. that time. And so that's why they have these overdeveloped hindquarters. They basically like put them in a, in a, like a blocking hold. Wow. So it's not for jumping. Not um, for jumping. That's not for jumping. But yeah, so all beetles do have wings, which is interesting. And also they actually have, so wings and in insects come in two parts, right? If you imagine a butterfly, mm -hmm. they have two wings, the upper yeah. wing and the lower wing, wing. And the same thing is for beetles, except that the upper wing is the wing cover, the elytra. Oh, so okay. that has hardened over time, but it's actually part of the same, anatomically, it's part of the same thing. It's yeah. just a different evolution of it. Yep. So the outer wing cover, the elytra, that hard shell, 
that's part of, that's like the top wing, and then the bottom wing is the one that's actually folded in. Not all beetles can fly, even though they have the wings. Um, some mm -hmm. of them are just vestigial. The beetles are, have become too fat and heavy to be able to fly on them, but, um, but a lot of them can fly. And all of them, I think, by definition, have wings and the wing covers. Um, and they're, they're very common um, beetles. Um, there are so many different kinds. I wish that we had more, ki more different kinds on our website. We have a lot more variety of butterflies and less variety of beetles, um, which it really should be the other way around. Um, I learned an interesting fact about um, beetles. Do you mm -hmm. know, like, as a proportion, okay. um, how much of all animals all animals are beetles okay it's, uh i imagine we're not counting like you know single cell no, multi-cell like a sponge a sponge is an animal right i'm not sure like those sea sponges i don't know what they're okay counting. i might okay i'm taking you in a <laughs> weird <laughs> you time. always find the loophole i always question. find a loophole yeah. <laughs> uh okay well uh I, I wouldn't say it's like 50% or something. So it's probably not, it's like not 50%. Probably like a good chunk. I would say 5 to 10. That's my guess. You would think and that would be impressive, right? It would be it would impressive, be impressive like for five one to ten type of animal to comprise 10% yeah. of all animal life on the planet. It's actually a lot higher. It's 25%. That's a so lot. So 25% of all animals on earth are a type of beetle. So it's like a beetle planet. So basically, yeah, we're just visiting and they wow. are they are the dominant life form. So I wish we had so many different other kinds to, yeah. to show. And maybe at the end, we can go and show you our collection a little bit. We have a lot of different okay. ones um, that we can show you back there. But anyway, so these uh, frog-legged beetles, um, they're called Sagra femorata, if you want to show the scientific name on the back so they can get the spelling. And Sagra, I think in Latin, means festival. So they're very festive beetles. You know, I think we've been through this before. What? When I show them written words oh it's backwards it's backwards okay well then so, they'll just have to you know it's a fun puzzle show but it in a mirror or something. yeah we have done we've done this like <laughs> so many times we have to you know okay we'll have to figure that out i have to add it in post yeah. like, i did it before like the little name yeah, and stuff yeah. but yeah well see that's another thing we can do once we start doing these episodes yeah recorded, we can have a little bit more control over the editing <laughs> um and so these so these beetles so they're they're called uh festival sagra femorata right and sagra i think means festival and they are very festive, as you can see. They come in lots of, um, they're very, very shiny. And they actually come in four different colors. So it's all the same species, but for some reason it comes in different colors. I'm not sure exactly why. Mm -hmm. it, I don't know if it's based on the season or, or, or what exactly. It's some kind of a genetic thing. But they come in blue, red, red. green, and like a deep green. So oh, we have okay, four yeah. Because I remember three, but I yeah. didn't remember. No, I think there's four, if not more. Um, uh -huh. We can go check when we when we go outside. But they're very, very cool. They have the beautiful iridescent, shiny, very deep colors. Um, very, very nice. So I like those a lot. Um, and, um, yeah, so that's that's it for the frog-legged beetle, uh, the Sabra femorata. Let's move on to the longhorn beetle. Okay? All right. Let me show this up. And that'll be the last one that we highlight today. And um, just to look at the antennae on that guy. They are really impressive. I like to think of them as his, like, his, and he has these, like, this little bushy detail, these little bristles that are on the antenna. And on the antennae, they kind of look like crazy Groucho Marx eyebrows. Um, very expressive. I really love them. Um, and this is the golden spotted longhorn. That's what it's called. It has a beautiful pattern on its body, as you can see. The other two beetles that we showed you are kind of more monochromatic, like more of a solid green, solid blue. This one has beautiful black and orange spots. Very, very pretty, very unique. Um, and um, this one is found across much of Southeast Asia. So we have a couple, I think actually they're all Asian um, this week. The ones that we have. Yeah. Yeah, Malaysia. So we have Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. So um, all around all around Asia, these, these beetles, very, very beautiful. And they actually use, I think, beetle parts in Asian art. I saw some really cool, like, antique 
um, art. They would use mm -hmm. the elytras um, to to um, you know to, to to make beautiful pieces of art, which was very cool. Um, and um, yeah, so this is the the longhorn beetle. Um, we try and be very careful and specific with how we um, how we position them. Um, as you can see, they're really cool. And um, yeah, so we've been, uh, past couple of episodes, I've been talking a little bit about color theory, so now I have another quiz uh -huh. for you um, as we're okay. getting ready to uh, do our, um, you know, redo our apartment. So we have um, three colors here today, orange, blue, and green. Okay. Okay, and so I picked these three colors for a reason. Everything, there's a plan behind mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. um, so... Do you know what kind of color combo? Blue, uh, uh, orange, and green. Blue, orange, and green. Uh, I want to say they're triads. Is that right? No. Close. That's no. my, you know, that's my best. Guess. <laughs> I don't know. So I they're... know. I know, like, how colors happen, but <laughs> I don't know anything about how they go together. Color theory. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so these are a split complement. Um, uh, color combination. So you would have the orange base mm -hmm. and then um, across from it in a sort of triangle, a, 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 um, a sharp triangle. What do they call them? Isosceles? Like, no. No. A, a sharp, uh, like, you know. Obtuse? No. no. The other way. Like, a, not an obtuse. Uh, I don't know. Acute. Dude, that's acute, yes. An acute. Jesus. An acute triangle. <laughs> <laughs> an acute triangle. I really got um, the ball with that one. Yeah. Triangles are my thing. <laughs> I thought you were all about shapes. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, so if you do an acute triangle, you yeah. have the orange and then green and blue um, mm -hmm. on the other side. And so these actually would all go really well together in a room. If you okay. have an orange brownish base, golden um, base color in a room, the blue and the green would be really nice pops of color against that. So okay. I recommend that for anybody else who is thinking about oh, how <laughs> color works. Thanks, in Chris. Apartment. He answered faster than we did. For what? The triangle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. People are smarter than us. Yeah, sometimes. people are smarter than us. <laughs> We're very tired. Our brains are only on, you know quarter speed um okay cool so um yeah i just wanted to finish up so we have the three um three different beetles the stag beetle um the longhorn beetle and the frog-legged beetle um which are all very cool hopefully you can see them um they're they're all very different and beautiful all different types of beetles uh, I want to finish up just quickly with a comment that we had on the last video, um, which is great. Please keep the comments coming. We love um, we love hearing from you. So this comment is from Ina Romain, um, and she asked, "Where do you source the butterflies?" So the last couple of episodes we've been doing have been on butterflies, so that's why I think we get this question, and we get this question a lot. We really do. Um, so I think it bears repeating. I think we've addressed it in some previous episodes, but I think it bears repeating because we seem to get the question um, a lot. And um, it's a definitely uh, an important question. And uh, so the butterflies, for the most part, come from butterfly farms um, it, throughout all over the world, really. And there, it's a really great, eco-friendly, um, sustainable industry. So they grow the butterflies. They're not taken from the wild. And then they are... Um, a lot of times they're released to pollinate local plants and then um, and, and the, the farms themselves are run by um, local people, indigenous people, and it gives them an economic incentive to preserve the green spaces in their countries instead of using them to um, exploiting them for like logging or other more destructive activities. So it's a really sustainable, um, eco-friendly industry. And then for the beetles, um, I'll just sort of go off of that. Um, the beetles are a little bit different. The beetles, for the most part, are not farm-raised. So they are actually collected, like, from the jungles and stuff like that. Um, again, most of the, the, the collecting is done by indigenous people, by local people down on the ground there. Um, that provides them a source of income that also, um, you know, uh, uh, motivates them to keep the green spaces green. 
and the beetle trade is a lot less intense than the butterfly trade. There is a lot more demand for um, butterflies, which is why they're raised on farms, um, but there is not as much of a demand for beetles, so it doesn't, um, there have, there, we don't sort of yet have the industrial economic structure to be able to raise them on farms, but, um, but that is the answer to that question. So, Ina, thank you for your question. If anybody else has any other questions about our products or where we get them or anything like that, we would be happy to answer your questions and hopefully we'll read your comments next time. Was there something? You're chuckling over there in the corner. Oh, it's no. Very it's distracting. <laughs> Sorry. Chris said that he had a subscription to Triangles Weekly. <laughs> That's how he guessed it. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, that was pretty okay. good, Chris. Okay, well, let's just finish up. And um, I want to, let's let's take a walk maybe and just finish oh, okay. up looking at the, um, yeah. the beetle case that we have out in the hall. So, follow me. Okay, there it is. I got it. So I just wanted to show you this beetle case a little bit that we have. Here, let me come over here. So um, these are even more different types of beetles than what we were able to show you today. These are the jewel beetles over here, um, so-called because of how shiny and, um, you know, uh, really precious they look. Um, so these are jewel beetles. Um, we have over here weevils, which are just the weirdest sort of shaped beetles, I think. Look at this guy. He's got like a crazy neck. Um, you know, it's just so awkward, um, which they're very, very interesting. Look at that one over there. Very interesting, weird shapes. Um, so those are the weevils. Over here we have, um, oh, here. Yeah, here are the frog-legged beetles. Look at all of these beautiful colors that they come in. I don't know if that can really come through, but look at that, it's so pretty. Such a large variety, of really interesting, really interesting colors. And over there we have stag beetles, and here we have um, two stag beetles locked in Mortal Kombat, um, using their, their mandibles as, you know, as they would in the wild, which is very interesting. And then up there we have the longhorn beetles, which are, um, which come in, you know, all different sizes. As you can see, some of them are very, very small, and some of them are <laughs> enormous. Um, that one on the top. Is I mean, you big. gotta put your hand in there. Can you put your hand in I there? I don't know if I can. It's a little high, but you can That's see good. it's. It's, really it looks big. like a giant cockroach. It is larger by far. It's about the size of my face. It's really, really yeah. big. <laughs> I I'm, I like bugs, but that particular one... <laughs> does not do it for you. <laughs> no. Um, it's a yeah, bit. so I just wanted to show you our collection. And uh, thanks again for, for all of your support and for tuning in and, um, you know, doing these, watching these, you know, helping us do these episodes and for all the support. Um... You know, especially during these difficult times, it's been really great, and we're so appreciative and grateful. We are going to switch, like we said, to a new format. We're going to go pre-recorded, um, but hopefully what that means is that we'll be able to get you better content, um, more prepared, a little bit more professionally edited, and um, that way we can keep this going um, in a different way. So if you have any special requests for things that you would like us um, to feature. We will now be a little bit more flexible in how we can construct our episodes. We can do themes, we can do um, you know, uh, a deep dive onto a certain product, we can review new products, we can you know, focus on, on old things, whatever it is that you would like us um, to talk more about, we now have the flexibility to sort of plan around that. So definitely keep those comments going. And um, until next time, we will see you very soon. Okay, bye.